Hey guys, I'm Flip Flop Noob, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can bond carry with a pan. First things first, you want to head over to Messy Mess Hall, which as you can see, I'm gliding over. It's the building with the big blue roof, and the best way to get there most of the time is just glide as far as you can. Always keep it in kind of like the default pose. You never want to tilt it fully out because that slows you down. Because this is all about speed. You need to get there as fast as you can. If other people get in front of you, even if like one person gets there in front of you, you still might not get a pan. There's two main things you can do when playing with pans. Is that one, you can have a team or a squad you go with and you all kind of share pans. You don't have to arrange that beforehand, but it's generally a smarter idea to because you don't know what the other person is going to do. And the other way is you take all the pans and then you can find people who either want to help you or have shields or health and you can trade pans for that. And so that's actually a pretty nice thing to have. The reason I even got my first bonk on Harry was because I gave some kid a pan because he was going to help me and he did. Alright, next what you want to do is you want to stay away from big open places. So that could be Bucket Lake, Foul Ball Field, uh, the Dead Trees in Between Lonely Woods and Vulture Valley. All of those are generally not a good place to be because you're easily seen, and if you're easily seen, you get shot. And if you get shot, you die. So simply put, just whenever you can, don't go for flat open areas. It's always better to have the high ground wherever you are because if you have the high ground, your opponent, or in this case, Harry, isn't going to get be able to get to you because if you're have, at a good place which isn't you know just like up a hill then it's going to take extra time for Harry to get to you and if you're using your time well you should be gone by the time Harry's there so moral of the story try and stay where it's hard to reach up above because then you get a good view of where people are especially Harry and that can become a really good tactical advantage Another thing is that it can become a real risk to stay on the outskirts. It may seem like, you know, a good idea. You know, Harry's probably not going to go over there. He wants to stay towards the middle. That's where people are going to be going. But for you, it's actually probably a worse choice because the swarm is going to be coming in. And what might happen is that you could get either caught in the swarm or Harry might be patrolling the area as you're coming out of the swarm which would lead to you either having to go back in the swarm or really get attacked by Harry, and neither of those are good options. So you've made it to the final circle, you're ready to kill Harry, but there's a couple things you need to know. First is you really have to surprise Harry. If you jump out from behind a rock or come up behind him, you gain a lot of opportunity to attack him, and also he's not really going to know what to do, at least for like half a second that's always a nice way to you know get a couple hits in and further secure your victory so there's a couple things that you can actually do that will work specifically with harry that'll make it a lot easier to either make it to those last moments of the game or attack him so the first being when he's going around the map he doesn't usually circle back on himself so he usually just clears out an area, you know, he scans it, checks around, and then he moves on to the next. So if you're trying to get behind him or just pass by, going in an area he has just moved through can stand risky, but it actually generally does work. I've done it a couple times and it's haven't had any problems. So if you need to do that, that's always an option. Another thing is that Harry is really prone to getting attacked from behind because he doesn't really turn around that much. So like, the first time I noticed this was the first game where I bonked Harry. The circle was right at the edge of Carn Carnivore Cave, and half of the circle was on the mountain, half of it wasn't. And Harry was down at the bottom. He's like, you know, I'm just going to wait for people to jump down because the circle's going to close in on me. And so before he moved, I actually noticed he wasn't, turning around all that often and I had a spare health potion so I actually went through the swarm got up behind him I was actually about to hit him 
but then he started moving away into one of the caves. Of course, I still got him from behind, and that's mainly why I got my victory. But, the moral of the story, sneaking up behind Harry is very valuable because it allows for more time for him to be like, wait, what's happening? And that can be the difference between winning and losing. Uh, the final thing about Harry is that this may seem a bit, you know, mean, but if he starts checking his chat, he's generally let his guard down. And so if you see him doing it, that could be a good time to attack him because I don't know if he, like, takes his headset off or something, but his attention clearly isn't on the game, which can make it pretty easy to attack him if you need to. So, again, it's <laughs> it's kind of a mean thing to do, but it's a thing. Alright, you've surprised Harry, you've got to jump on him. So, what? there's two things you really need to keep in mind of. Is that the pan, like most other weapons in Rec Room, has some issues with a hitbox where it kind of lags behind. And so if you're not careful and you don't kind of plan ahead or really get that pan in your target, it's not going to hit most of the time. So you really need to get close to your target in order for it to work. And then the second thing is that you need to be maneuvering around Harry. So because when he's shooting at you, he has ammo and all that stuff, and he has times where he can shoot and times where he cannot because of, you know, time in between shots. And so, you can really take away the advantage of having a gun if you just keep, like, moving around him, because it can get kind of disorienting and then hard to hit. It's really not a good idea to ever charge him straight on, even if you're attacking, if he starts leading you on you need to start kind of like moving around to the side a bit because at least then you're not just getting hit in the face over and over. So yeah, as long as you do that, your victory is assured.